Hi everyone, we're going to get straight into it this time. This video will be short and sharp. What I'm going to talk through is how to set up and the value of lookup tables. So we've got a data set over here. This is already being converted to a table. We can tell that partly because it's got a particular formatting, but also when we click inside the table, there's an extra tab up the top called table design. We can see that the name of the table is TBL data. Our lookup tables on this sheet have not yet been converted to tables, so you can see in column A up the top here, I've put down what actions we're going to take to get started on this project. So clicking inside this first group of data, you'll note that there is a blank row above and a blank column to the right of my data set. That helps because Excel now can understand that it is together and um, not to include any other data because that blank column is a separator. So on the insert tab, I click table. It does a pretty good job of guessing it. And that is now a table. I've given it TBL weeks as my desired name. I haven't called it that yet. I'm just going to copy. With my cursor inside the cell, I click on table design. By default, it's called it table two. I don't want that. I want to call it TBL weeks. Same thing on this next table here. Insert table. This table is about uh, athlete information. It tells the position and we're going to populate a couple of other things. It's also got a velocity target in there that we'll use as one of our examples. Let's call that TBL athletes. And finally, our last table TBL positions. As you can see, I use a pretty standard methodology and um, always prefix Excel tables with TBL. Row number, or step number two here, is to comment the tables out. Now I've done that already to save time, but I have hidden the text, so it's white font at the moment. I'm going to make it red. And the value of this uh, may not be significant for you if you are working on your own project and no one else is ever going to look at it. But if this is a sheet for someone else, it can be quite useful to explain what each table does. So that's what I've done. All right, so I'm going to leave these tables alone now and go to the data table. And the first thing I want to populate is for every date, I want to put a week number and a week label. So here we are on the data sheet. And as you can see, we've got some blank columns ready for us to connect. So the first thing I said we were going to do was the week starting and the week label. And so we have, on the lookup tables, we just have the Monday of each week. The 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd. So we can look that up. What do we want to index? Well, we want to index TBL weeks. I've now selected the table, but I also want to select the column. I want to pull in the beginning of the week, the Monday of every week. So I'm choosing that option. And how am I going to find the correct Monday? Well, I'm going to write a match formula. That looks up the date. In the Monday column. And it finds the closest match that is less than. So I'm going to choose one, the first option, which is less than. If I close that off and hit enter, what it will populate is the Monday that each of these days belongs to. Let's scroll down and see if it worked. You can see when it got to 
the 9th, it recognised that that was part of the second week which begins on the 8th. The second thing that I'm going to populate, I'm going to use exactly the same formula, index, what do I want to populate? The column from the weeks table that is called week label. How do I want to find it? Match function will do that for me. By looking up the date in the weeks table, in the first column, and just like before, I choose the first option there, which is a less than approximate match. So when I populate that, we can just have a little quick check. We can see that it is identifying correctly the dates and which and which week they are a part of. Now what we can do is just to test the water here, I can choose the 1st of October and I can see that that updates correctly so uh, you can pre-populate the formula in the table and enter your dates in and it will automatically select the correct week. Next thing we can populate is the position for each athlete. So we have that in the players table. So same formula. What do I want to look up? When I use a TBL prefix in front of every table, one of the good things about it is if I type TBL in, all of the tables appear and I can just with the up down arrow keys choose the one that I want. I want to pull in the position. by matching the name to the name column of the athlete's table. This time it's an exact match because an athlete's name is always going to be spelled correctly and we can see here that it is pulled in their position now so we have a much more complete table to do some work with. So now those tables are connected if we go and change the lookup tables, for example Caroline Masters is here as a defender, if we go and change that and make her a midfield, then that will also update in this table because those tables are connected. We haven't typed in midfield, we have connected it and so that's quite good to know. It may not always be what you want to do, so it's worth being careful. but certainly to be able to update one table rather than have to update each row of a large data set is a much better option. What I want to do now is show you how valuable connecting lookup tables can be. I've got some abbreviated GPS information here. Normally you get a lot more columns of data and different metrics but I've trimmed it right back to make this example really easy to watch. So we've got uh, distance and max velocity columns here and let's use both of those. Now you may, have, you may have noticed that on the right hand side some formula that we're evaluating to an error have now shown to have a value in it. Just going to fix that format quickly. We can see that for a defender, a midfield and a forward these are the average session distances. So let's use that. That's a nice, easy example of how a lookup table can be useful. So we've got defender, midfield and forward, and a session average distance. So I'm going to go here I'm going to call the column above average. Because I've used a table format, it swallows it up and it expands the table to include my new column. Now what I want to show here is to compare today's distance covered to the average distance covered for each position group. So we've got that in the table, we just saw that a second ago. What I need to be able to do is write a formula that allows me to check column H, which is distance, against the position specific distance on the other sheet. So let's try this out. First thing I want to do is simply get the distance from the other table. Just like before I'm going to use index, 
what am I looking at? I'm looking at the position table and I'm looking at the session average distance. How am I finding the one that I want? I'm using the match function by position. So if I close that off, I get our session specific average distance. It's not what I want, but it's a good start. I go right back to the front of the formula and say if today's distance is greater than that distance, then say above, otherwise say below. Now if I hit enter, that formula changes and it gives me the above and below. I could really easily, for example, add some conditional formatting that says a new rule format cells that contain a cell value equal to below can be formatted I don't like the really harsh reds but something like this so now we can see anything that doesn't meet our average goes red otherwise there's no shading now we could put shading in for the above as well if we wanted to a green color but um, let's not get caught up in that but you can see here that we've looked up the other table to get our information from it and what's interesting is that the other table is looking up this data to find out what the average is so in the other table we can see that the average of the position specific distance is what's coming into this table so this summary table looks to the data table calculates a session average the data table then looks to that table to see whether today's distance is greater or lower than that average so we can find all sorts of useful things with regard to connecting tables but the real key is being able to write lookup formula that allow you to extract the information you need and the second key is having the tables be really structured with clear names, clear column headings, and ways to connect it. So for example, the player names need to be exactly the same as they are in the data set. The dates need to be very carefully written. The position groups need to be spelled correctly. If all of those things are in place, then you can connect the tables easily and provide yourself with lots of opportunities to do reference work and compare velocities, compare, compare distances, look up position specific values, all sorts of things like that. I'm going to do one more quick example and that is I'm going to call that velocity above. We've got a max velocity reached in the session and what I want to do is see if that velocity is greater than the velocity target for each individual player. So this is individualized. The last example was position specific. So we do the same process, but just do a slightly different lookup. Once again, I want to do it in two pieces to make it easier. The first thing I want to do is pull in the value. It's in the athlete table. The velocity target is what is what our search target is. We want to use the match function by matching the athlete name against the athlete name and there you go we've got the velocity target now we can simply say if this velocity value from today is greater than that, then it's 
something like that. It doesn't matter what you do, but we can see now that with a few clicks, we have got an indication of whether the player reached their velocity target for the session. Now I've done this kind of thing before where you have velocity targets for each type of training session, and so you could leverage off um, another column, for example, column F might be a session type that allows you to say, well, this is a session where we were doing high velocity work, and so therefore we want you to be at a higher max speed, whereas another session might be quite technical and therefore there's a lower velocity target. So all of those things are easy to do. You just need a well-organized lookup table that allows you to reference and look between sets of data and connect them. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.